All right, friends. Wow, we are having big talks here uh, uh, off the recording. It would probably get us canceled everywhere. So, uh, we, are, we are teasing, but uh, the audience is laughing. They, they, they just did about uh, 100 wow, 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 uh, about, uh, well, switcheroos and, and what's true and who's real and who's a man and who's a uh, not man and that kind of thing. And, of course, it's all... Uh, it's all part of what's unfolding today in the befuddlement, the bewilderment, the, uh, the blackmail, and the brainwash. But uh, the, the truth will shine, and we are counting on you to be the resilient, the resourceful, and of course, uh, super clever. All right, so it's your turn, moon afternoon, um, and uh, let's, let's keep the ball in the air and uh, talk about some really good things. And, uh, Remember, state your name and your sign and ask a question that everyone can benefit from. Or if you're clever enough to trick us into asking personal questions, uh, go for it. If you are, think you are smarter than we are, or smarter than the pigeons, no problem. So as long as you laugh, remember, that's the whole point of the pigeons and many of the things we do is to keep you laughing. Laughing boosts your immune system. It relaxes the body. It is one of the very best things you can do for your own health. So, let's turn it over to you. Who would like to begin? Uh, state your name loud and clear. I'll start. How could this be? It's quiet. Or we have a volunteer, but let us tell the, the, the tape landers, Roger's not here. Fur Daddy has got Fur Daddy babysitting to do. <laughs> and uh, Fur Daddy, he announced many times he was reluctant. Not this time. He is an enthusiastic Fur Daddy. Uh, he's at home babysitting uh, Stella, the cat, who has been fixed. <laughs> and so uh, Roger sends his blessings. So if you don't hear him coughing or humming or putting his, uh, his part in, it's because he's not here. And Dorsey uh, is the beeper keeper. <laughs> All right, now we had a volunteer here. Who is it? It's Liliana. What is your name? Liliana. Liliana. Yes. And uh, that's Sagittarius. A, Sagittarius. Liliana. Yes. And that's a very nice name. And of course, you've got Anna in there, and uh, that's An. <laughs> so it's Anunnaki. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's just the way it goes. Our, our vehicle is uh, uh, B A R, B A R, and M A R. Uh, whether it is R-A or A-R, it is still Ra Marduk. So th those Anunnakis, they, they sneak their names in everybody's names. Liliana, uh, welcome, and uh, where have you come from? Washington State. Oh, at least it's not Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> at least that's a, a bit of a breather there. All the rest of the room, uh, half of them have come from the Washington, D.C.-ish area, Virginia, New York, etc., uh, how are things in Washington State? Where I live, it seems okay. Um, Seattle and you know some of those larger areas are yeah pretty chaotic and people are very fearful. And but I happen to live in a county where it just seems like not a lot of you know I don't know. It's, it, it's good. My life is good. I'll say I don't know. This is very good. Congratulations because uh, there's a, a lot of. Um, shenanigans going on on the west coast and as our vehicle was saying and we were too there had been weather wars attack the west coast and and more than that um you are sitting on a volcanic chain that's that's a potential at some point in the next 10 years for those volcanoes uh, to let loose but in the meantime let's go with the good life so what's your question I've been doing a, a protocol, it's called the Lightworker Healing Protocol by Carl Mollison, and it removes entities, it also um, removes it from people, you know, not just from people, but also you can use it to remove from uh, places like your home and all that kind of stuff. It also uh, it does a, heal it's a healing modality, so um, you can heal the person and also it heals the perpetrator if you have some kind of trauma you're trying to heal. And it also helps transition people to the light when they pass. So, so, so what is it called again? It's called the Light Worker Healing Protocol. Light Worker Healing Protocol. Protocol. And yeah, we are certain. Carl Mollison. Mm -hmm. And what's the person's name? Carl Mollison. K A R L Mollison. Oh, right. M O L L I S O N. Now, we do not know these people at, at right. all, but uh, we are trusting that Liliana. Uh, 
must know what she's talking about if she came all the way uh, from Washington to uh, pass on this information. And uh, the first part, we are talking about how this is one of your problems, being totally overrun by entities that have been ritually uh, called in uh, and basically uh, the dark forces that are on Earth said, hey, more dark forces, come on down. All right, no. Um, so my to, go ahead. My question is, I just wanted to know what your opinion was on this modality and if it's really legit, like, I mean, is it really working? And, um, and I'm only saying this because my cousin just passed away and I did the protocol for her and I just want to see if she's maybe in the light already using this protocol and what do you think about it or can you give us any opinions about it? We know nothing about it, so we, we really cannot give an opinion. We are not really picking up a reading on it because you are uncertain about it, you understand? <laughs> There's lots of really good people on the planet who are here to do good work and to help you. And the, the sometimes words are used to trick you and hook you in, like worker, for example. Other people can use light worker and it can have a it can be completely legitimate. Whenever you are pursuing something, check to see in your third chakra, your your gut, uh, the, the the brain and the belly, where the microbiome is activated, and what's your feeling on it? If, if something sounds too good to be true and too simplistic, it likely is. As we talked about in part one, um, different entities have different, uh, different, we call them hitchhikers, attachments, have different agendas. Uh, uh, a person who died and didn't know where to go might be just confused and, and they might just be stuck someplace because they didn't know where to go. When you get dark forces, and they came in from drug abuse, sexual abuse, um, or a person who's too casual with sex and has not been kind to their lovers. That, that where sex is, is, is uh, kinky, raunchy, um, uh, destructive, sadistic, those entities, you, you could have a, a, a revelation, you could abandon everything and go into a monastery, and it doesn't mean those entities would leave you. It would mean that you don't do the behavior that the entity wants, but the entity may never leave you. And the other thing about entities' uh, attachments, they can ride the genetic line. So you can be dealing with what we call a family genie. A family dark force that goes that came on a long time ago because of what someone something did, and it's there it ingrained genetically. Now, from our point of view, behavior changes, belief changes um, are very important, and then doing a cleansing or a clearing, uh, 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 and acting out as if. So the native people, when they want to clear energy, they burn sage, and they burn cedar. Sometimes they burn lavender. Um, other people can use aromatherapies to start to purify uh, and, and uh, call for divine forces to come in. Uh, think about many churches or uh, temples, uh, sacred places. They would burn incense. And the incense is designed to clear, to clear the air and to keep away any dark forces. Just like lighting a candle is designed to hold the light. The problem that you deal with today in this hidden war that's filthy, nasty, dirty and sneaky is that dark forces will pretend that they are light. Absolutely. In the 90s, it was minimal. Today, it is blatant. Look at the president of the USA. He continuously goes out there and says the opposite of what is true. 
So, you have to use your own intuition. And how do you feel it worked for, was a cousin or a sister you said? Yes, for my cousin. Um, I feel that it does work. I've, I've been using it for a couple of years now and okay. I have felt it um, in myself um, because, and I know there's been a shift because I sleep better. I Good. can sleep, um, I'm not tired, I don't need coffee. Um, I've, see, I've used it on my children and Good. my family. It's better. Uh, they don't fight with each other like they used to. They're well, not this vicious. Is, this is a, a very good, good, good news. And um, what do you think the most important protocol is? The most important part of it? Or? Yes. Well, it has a lot of different things in it, but I think the most important part is that you can do it and it empowers you to, to take control and to kind of... Um, I guess channel God's energy to heal others, to heal yourself. Perfect. And to... You said the perfect words. You take control to channel or call in God's energy. You see, when you have an entity, you're not in control. And some people, some people like the entities they have because the entities deal with life for them. They don't know how to deal with life. So people get attachments, not at all for the same reasons. But if it works for you, and you have seen improvement, then that is the testimony of experience that it is working. I've, I've also had dreams. So like if I do, say for example, a healing mm -hmm. on someone, sometimes I'll have a dream where I see all these energies, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for me to interpret it, but I'll have a dream right the day that I do it, um, that it's happening, you know, that I've seen it happening. Um, I think, for me, it has worked very good, and I feel like as long as you're using God's energy and you're connecting yourself to the Creator, and, you know, it's not something that you have to fight on yourself, but if you can channel God's energy, it will take care of everything for you as far as, like, those entities it's using the you know like the energy t or asking God to do it for you. You're not necessarily doing it yourself, exactly. But you're asking God to do it for you, and you're using your own energy with it. You know, you're putting your energy in, and God's energy is meeting you there. And you, you know, your Holy Spirit, all that stuff's involved. So, um, I feel good about it. This is what the planet is going to turn to in this decade. The entire planet will be at times so overwhelmed with dark forces that there will only one way through it. They may not get down on their knees, but many will. And to ask for help and to ask for the higher power to restore goodness. Because again, this is a meeting of forces <coughs> that are massive. And on the human realm, you are here to witness and observe but your um, a couple classes ago we said someone said that your superpower is common sense or, or critical thinking your superpower is the ability to think thought 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 sends out messages it creates the, the globalist wants you to think that you are nothing that you need 5G or 10G uh, faster and faster because you are nothing compared to technology. Of course, the exact opposite is true. All right. Um, thank you for that testimony. And uh, obviously, many people will uh, hopefully be helped, and uh, they'll check out your, your uh, system of, of reliability for cleaning up their lives and calling in divine forces, uh, asking for God to do the work. And in this capacity, yes, everything can change. But you must expect that if you want to rid yourself of the problems, everything must change, and it will change, and it can change. All right, who's next on the on the roster of questions? Hi, Pease. This is Harold. Harold, welcome. Thank you, Sagittarius. Many people happy to hear from you and wondering about your partner, O, uh, over there in Ruski land. And... Um, Lots of prayers and good energies have been sent your way and her way. And uh, so do you want to give the listening audience a little report? Well, first, thank you for your help and everybody's 
good thoughts and prayers. Um, Olga is well. She was so she spent five months in the, in prison, which is crazy. And then, little out. So she, she spent she, she five spent, months in in prison confinement. Correct. Uh, there, where Brittany Griner was. And right then, there with the. Yeah. Oh goodness gracious. Yeah, and then miraculously on Thanksgiving she was released on house arrest. And since then, she's been with her family, so she's well, and we're able to speak. And uh, you know, objectively, she's okay. We're just ready to be reunited. Does anyone check on her? Yes. She so she has like an ankle bracelet. Um, and there's like a the local police guy who's very nice who comes to check on her once a week. And recently, she was granted permission to go on walks every day within you know 500 meters of her residence. So she's okay. In that sense, you know, we're we're definitely doing our best to create a reality in which the case is dropped, and that she doesn't have a trial, and that she can come home soon. Well, yes, it, it, we are working with you uh, for to have the case dismissed. Yes, and you do understand that this is all part of the political game that happened with the Ukraine war. Yes, yes, and the takedown of well, let's say the, the uh, Putin for. Well, whoever and whatever he is, uh, he's certainly no, no uh, uh, <clears throat> a warm, fuzzy hero, but uh, he's not the, the necessary demon that he is being made out to be, and he is fighting this globalist war uh, against these uh, reptilian controllers. And uh, well, just look at the landmass that he controls. Uh, Russia has uh, never really come into its own fruition. Even when Catherine the Great or some of your uh, other great rulers there, it, it was taken over and the people were exploited. And so uh, there could come a time when uh, the energy out of coming out of that landmass is a leader in the world, but uh, not very soon. So do you have a question? I have two questions, yeah. All right. Uh, the first is about, you know, I'm sorry I keep talking about World War II, but in a recent, or actually I think it was about a year ago, you guys mentioned that the original Aryan people were reptilian. And I'm wondering if you meant that they worshipped reptilians or were ruled by reptilians or that if they actually were reptilian in nature. We do not have a recollection of saying that the Aryan people were reptilian. We are Definitely it happened because it caught my attention. Within what location were these people? Well, originally, in our, from our understanding, the Aryan people were what are called the Proto-Indo-European or Indo-Iranian people. These were the ones that spoke Sanskrit and um, yes, then they would be yes, then they would be the reptilian lineage. Yes, we we just we needed the reference to go back to what you were referring to. Yes, they they, they are um, a race that people say they don't know where they came from. Yes, the Indo-Europeans, yes. So were these like Enkiites, in a sense? It's difficult to call them strictly Enkiites because the Anunnaki presence is greater in the cosmos than we have covered, let us say. We have been telling a, a, a section of the story as it has been as it was uh, recorded uh, and transcribed on Earth, the Anunnaki brothers. In their records, the Earth-bound records, they, at least the records that have been uncovered to date, they were um, very silent on the rest of their empire. And they portrayed themselves as um, lost without earth and that they needed uh, the the supplies of earth particularly gold and and then later on the excuse was well they had to make workers to procure the gold because their workers uh, mutinied and and so their their story is very specific the story that they left on earth is is large, and Zachariah Sitchin and other people have written many, many books about it, but it is only a chapter 
in the Anunnaki story and they don't want you to know a lot about them. They have colonized other areas uh, in, in your uh, uh, galaxy so that when you look out at the heavens you sometimes are looking at Anunnaki reptilian territory. Earth was settled in such a way um, that could accommodate a mammalian reptilian um, merging of species after different genetic experimentations, etc. Because as you know, in the field of biology, uh, cross-species fertilization doesn't go anywhere. In other words, a lion's not going to mate with a bear, even if they agree to do it, even if genetically engineered. Uh, so um, the, there were many break-offs and branch-offs of reptilians from the Enlil Enki line on Earth. Have other forces from other places come to your planet? Well, there's the story of the Dracos. And, and they are a location of, of some Anunnaki. They are more uh, warriors. Um, then there are some locations where you have more of a, an elite type of, of Anunnaki, uh, far beyond a council of 12 from Nibiru, where there would be an entire planet uh, that may have just uh, what you call the royal um, the, the, the royal reptiles and some of these may even uh, house uh, the white dragons uh, you have a, a group on earth in Indonesia, China some sage, uh, they talk about the white dragons as being uh, good beings and they're going to save things and, and they're always fighting the dark forces etc and they're, they're sort of like out of, uh, out of Asia the, the white dragons uh, but our vehicle herself um, she will decide to leave this in there or not but we'll tell it to the room um, she will take it out but we'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> but she can take it out it's no problem but we'll tell you uh, she had a regression uh, when she was uh, snatched years ago by extraterrestrials and when they brought her back they were the little blue beings but she with work that she did to explore it she was taken up into a big, 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 gigantic mother ship, and she said her DNA was being cleaned. And after her DNA was cleaned, she was taken to the top of the ship, and there she met a white dragon. It's when she did the regression years and years and years ago, all she'd remembered was being snatched in the blues. So nonetheless, uh, we don't want to take up too much time with that, but uh, the white dragons do exist and uh, there's a hierarchy not just that's uh, isolated to um, the Nibiruans and Enlil and Enki there are other dragon lines the dragon line is not isolated to the Anunnaki All right. what else Harold? Thank you, uh, the second question is recently you were talking about the ancient human genome and how it predates uh, the creation of, well, this is where it gets weird, the, the humans by the Anunnaki, and this is my confusion. Um, do you understand my, what I'm saying? Yes, because the historical record here shows uh, human evidence far prior to the Anunnaki story where they claim they made you and they wouldn't said they made you, their first experimentations would have been about, well they came in 450, 450,000 years ago. After 150,000 years, it's beyond your comprehension, after being here 150,000 years, remember one year to them is 3,600 years, then they began, because that's when the mutiny took place. Then they began the genetic experimentation. <clears throat> now, 
at that point, Earth had already had a major decimation, a number of major decimations. Um, you have your crazy climate change people out there today, and they are changing the climate, and then they want you to be afraid of climate change. They are changing the climate with weather control. They are changing the climate with everything, but they are blaming you for breathing, because you are carbon-based. But the Earth is very vulnerable. And there was a time when the moon was not where it is. There was no moon. And the moon was put into place to act as a stabilizer. Some say by the Anunnaki. Which batch, of course, is, is the question, how long it's been there. Which is, is records that show that the moon is much older than Earth. And of course, it's, it's pockmarked with all kinds of craters. And how could it get so many craters when Earth doesn't have anything to even come close to matching it? So um, all kinds of speculation there, but part of what Earth does, part of what the moon does, it stabilizes the Earth. Before the moon was there, there were all kinds of civilizations here, giants, small people, uh, a wide variety of species because Earth <clears throat> had evolved and developed into what you call a Goldilocks climate. It, it, could, it could house life. And in its most ancient form, it always was the living library, it, it, it formed. And then it was terraformed by others. And it, you could say that mind of God kind of beings developed life and brought life from other places and, and let life cultivate itself here. Not a zoo that the Anunnaki has turned it into, a living library. A library that replicated itself, that was, that was a sanctuary among each species. And then, of course, when the Anunnaki came 450,000 years ago, they, they had, they, they decimated, yes, they did, they, they decimated ranks of people. But uh, where they landed in the Persian Gulf and where they began to develop things, um, there was nothing there. But there were creatures in Africa, and there was uh, a need to destroy many of the creatures in Africa and to use a, a more simple kind of human. But uh, there were also uh, more developed humans. And so the Anunnaki, um, uh, knowing their records could damn them, so to speak, just like Fauci's emails are, are getting him in all kinds of big trouble today, no matter how much he denies that he didn't know what he knew, the records show he did. And so the, the Anunnaki are a little more clever serpents than the snake Fauci, and uh, they told the story in a way that covered everything up. And when the story was dictated and told to the scribes, Often the scribes could write, but they could not read what they wrote. So there was an ignorance of what was going on. Your planet has been habituated by all manner of, of evolved humans. And in one of our old works, we talked about one, some of the old, old, old humans having 12 strands of DNA. What else, Harold? So just to clarify, what we call a modern-day human is actually a hybridization of a pre-existing ancient human genome with the reptilian uh, DNA or whatever. And that's why we can, like you said, mate with reptilians. Yes, that we would say that there are some people who argue that no, the reptilians didn't do anything and they are a separate species. We are sorry to say they, they, they are supreme genetic engineers and they're still at it in laboratories, and they've got humans mixing up all kinds of animal and human hybrids, and going back to making a, a species of reptilian and human uh, to run the planet again, because uh, their old plan, you know, that the reptilians that mated with the humans, and they started mixing and mingling, Noah, of course, being one of them, and, and having the, the, they called it the, the badge of shame, and some called it the badge of courage, but it was the reptilian skin. 
and Noah hid this, of course, as the story goes from his family. Um, but bottom line is, over periods of time, the reptilian gene, but more than that, the reptilian psychic connection to the changelings, and the changelings were the priestly caste and kingly, queenly caste that was purposely cultivated to be the rulers of Earth, and they had part reptilian and part human genes. So, and this is, of course, the recent Anunnaki from the last 500,000 years. And, and you, you would go up until, yes, in, in the last 2,000 years, you would have had different dynasties. The Merovingian dynasty uh, out of France has a distinct uh, reptilian uh, uh, lineage to it. But what happened is the reptilians could have a supremely psychic link into their overlords. And today that link is not there. You have seen pictures of crowns, yes? Uh, look at uh, Elizabeth, the recently deceased monarch of England. They're showing different pictures of her crown and Charles' coronation is coming up. And they have um, a, a metal, some metal antenna, yes? And then on the metal antenna would be jewels, yes? yes. These jewels, many of them priceless, emeralds, rubies, diamonds, etc., they are a mimic, sort of a, a playhouse version of the old Mies from long ago. The Mies were a, a, type of, um, a type of crystalline energy, but they also had an intelligence to them that you would now today align with artificial intelligence, AI. So what they would do when they had the strong reptilian link, they could put that crown on, or sometimes they would wear a breastplate, or they would hold different jewels, or, or sit on a throne that was encrusted with jewels. And even though the jewels were not the me's, so to speak, too dangerous to give the humans the me's, and you wouldn't have the intelligence to use them, um, there could be telepathic communication. You sit there on the throne, you hold the, the scepter, you hold the ball, you wear the crown, and you receive. Even in Rome, in the papacy, if you go to the top of uh, St. Peter's uh, Basilica, you'll see there's a, a, a dome, uh, and that dome uh, supposedly has a room where the popes go to communicate with the ETs. Got a wow out of you. <laughs> it's the wowing 20s. So, uh, so what happened is modern times, particularly since the end of Elizabeth I, which would be, what, 1600? We believe she was during the 1500s. So from 1600 onward, yes, you had world exploration, uh, and then 100, 200 years later, you begin the Industrial Revolution, and suddenly people uh, are thinking of machines, and, 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 and all this is coming in. Of course, it's all being sent to people in the heads. You are easily, easily a puppet. Easily, all of you. You, you are, if you're going to work in the fields and collect eggs and be a farmer, and there's menial work. But anyone who's doing inventive, creative work, they're not generally creating it themselves, especially when it's involving inventions of technology and machines. You're being given those patterns in your brain or in the dream state. Many of an inventor has woken up and, and sketched out what was said to them in the dream state. Many, many, many. But they don't want to necessarily reveal how that happened, because then they would think that people would think they weren't smart. The ego, ego, the human ego, and of course, the programming. So what's happened is now the royals have, they've run dry. Uh, where Elizabeth may have had a, a bit of a link, she was the last of an old school. 
Charles, it's interesting, Charles will get off on this for a bit here. Here's Charles scolding his, his, uh, his son, Harry, kicked him out of his home. That's, and Harry's there doing everything to take down his father, uh, although it's not his father, but uh, he's doing everything to take mm -hmm. Charles down nonetheless. And, and then there's William, who wants to be the good boy. And then there's that other prince there that got involved with Epstein and paid the girl off, but said nothing happened, but I paid her off nonetheless. <laughs> okay, nothing happened, nothing to see here. Nothing happened, but I gave her uh, 13, 15 million, something like this. Well, Charles, all the while, was best buddies with that creepy guy. Uh, we forget who he is. They're famous. He's dead now. They knighted him. Jimmy he, Who was it? Jimmy Savile. Jim, thank you again. Jimmy Savile, yes? Something like that. Savile, yeah. And he was England's most famous, famous, lit up in neon signs, pedophile. And Charles was his best buddy. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. You watch. If Washington is going to go one day, the crown is going to go sooner. Much, much sooner. Much. We gave you something to think about, Harold? Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to you if you like. Who has a question? Hello, please. Hello. Jo Joanna. Joanna, welcome. Thank you. Leo. Leo. And so there's a theme here. Um, and you're visiting. I'm visiting from Philly. From Philly, mm -hmm. all right. Yes, I have two questions if there's time, but my main question is about, um, I understand that the Anunnaki um, were targeting Earth because of gold, the highest, having the highest vibration, and that humans were used to mine that gold. And my question is about um, currency in a sense of, I know the Nasara Jasara stuff is, is, you know, BS, not, not going to happen. Yeah, losing going, you. Not going to happen that way, sorry. But the people have invested in foreign currency, uh, the Iraqi dinar, the um, Vietnamese dong, the Zimbabwe dollar, and are, are these, um, it's been told to people that um, this gold is humanity's gold, and that people are uh, it's going to be returned to humanity for humanity to do good with it and to help people and to provide jobs and help us not be financial and emotional slaves so that we can have the time to do the work on ourselves, the inner work, the divine work. A lot of information out there about these funds being released to people. We talked about them last time, the Nasara Gasara, yes? No, I'm not, no, I'm not talking about Nasara Gasara. I, I understand that that's not that that's not good. going to happen that way. I'm very, very clear on that. Good. But there are people that, but um, there are people that are involved in currency exchanges where funds are going to be released or there are going to be exchanges um, where people are going to get millions of dollars to distribute and to be able to help humanity, help other people, help with sustainability and help people not to be financial and emotional slaves as well as to heal the financial issues that are going on in this country and around the world. Is that in fact what is going to happen? That, and I understand the dragon families are involved in that, um, white dragons, red dragons, and that they are the keepers of the gold, or at least some of the key part of what Kennedy was trying to do with the Sukarno, um, and the Sukarno Trust is trying to you know, release that money back into, into humanity, for humanity's use, and within days of that, he was assassinated. So I'm just wondering if that that um, narrative has any validity. It some, any sense. some, <laughs> but there's a lot of uh, promises <clears throat> that can keep people following the carrot. And any day now, any day, the same yes. thing with Nasara Gisara. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to. All credit cards going to be. Uh, uh, forgiven, or this is going to be forgiven. Uh, you won't owe mortgages anymore, and. A lot of it is, and the Gasara Nisara level is all wishful thinking. Okay. And on the level you are speaking with the white dragons and the release of old money and gold, we'll say this that if you've noticed, uh, India, an old Anunnaki country, Rusha, very, very ancient. Rusha, the Rusha was vital. Uh, 
um, in the early days uh, of the Anunnaki incursion, and Russia was very vital prior, 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 maybe millions of years ago to uh, 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 Anunnaki settlements. But uh, they're all buying gold. China is buying gold. Um, everyone wants gold. Uh, Iraq, Iran, they're all buying gold and uh, pulling the gold out of banks, out of Switzerland. Uh, it does not look to us as we see things now that anyone is going to distribute monies to equalize, uh, equalize what? You go to Africa, very poor. You go to Mexico, it's very poor. Well, so let's use Mexico. You've got incredible poverty. You've got a, a president, Obador, there. He, he's, uh, there's no fentanyl problem, he says. Um, so let's just say that suddenly someone says, OK, all you Mexicanos, uh, we are going to equalize it for you. And here you all have money now, and you don't have to live in poverty. It's not going to fix anything. Everyone who has a lot of money knows you give a lot of money to your kids who did not earn it, and guess what they do with it? They blow it. They blow it. And so there's, yes, things are, are, are people are being stolen from, and their livelihoods are, are destroyed, but if there's no, as we see, a catch of gold that is going to be given back to people, and they are going to then be in utopia and have picnics and not have to work, they will you give a lot of poor people money, sex, drugs, rock and roll. And, and the next thing would be food obesity. It doesn't work that way. Think about your greatest rewards, your greatest victories. They are from being resilient and picking yourself up after you failed. After you learned, oh, pooey baloney. I, I went out last night and I, I spent $50 on booze and partying and now I have a headache and I'm $50 short on my rent. Do you understand what we are saying? Completely, yes, completely. That your story sounds wonderful, but a, a lot of these, and they're going to live happily ever after. Learn from experience. So we do not see any kind of restoration of gold and funds to create any kind of equalization on the planet because you have too many immature people. And you have a lot of really good, hard-working people who happen to be living in countries that are very corrupt. But you have a lot of good, hard-working people in this country who have learned how to skate around the corruption and, and, and build a business and, and work and achieve something. Now, you are not destined to be workers forever. And people say, oh, well, the humans are slaves and all they do is work. You have to do something. You have to do something. You have to garden. You have to raise children. You have to have a family. You have to procure food. But we agree that the system tremendously works against the people. But it's often people who hold down their fellow people out of greed. That's what it comes down to. It's greed. And they forget. They forget that they live again and again. And they don't have a culture that reminds them that they live it again and again. And so, Mr. Overseer, you want to beat five people and, and rape three of them? Guess what's going to happen to you in your next life? That is one of the missing components that would help people understand that what they do is going to come back to them. Do you have anything else to ask us? 
Uh, thank you very much. You've actually confirmed for me what, what I was intuitively feeling about this situation. Yeah. My, other, my other question is about medicine. I'm right, a, a little louder, please. My, I'm a nurse. I'm in medicine. And I'm wondering what can we expect in the next several months or until next year about medicine. Um, I, see it, I see it crumbling literally by the day. And, yes. Um, yes. What, I'm also an Ayurvedic practitioner, so I dwell in both worlds of Eastern and Western medicine. What can we expect in terms of medicine and um, how people are being treated um, for their for their chronic conditions? The problem is is that um, people don't expect to get well. They expect the doctor to fix them. Agreed. And so the results are, are, are appalling. But uh, surveys and people who look at all these things show that the people who improve, whether it's COVID or whatever the situation is, they are positive thinking and they expect to get better. They expect to get better. Regardless if the doctor says you have three months to live or you would better get in you for an operation or you'll be dead by Friday. Now, sometimes, maybe two times out of ten, that may be a correct statement. But often, doctors have to make money, hospitals have to make money. And if you are a big honcho surgeon at a big hospital, hospital's not going to be happy with you if you keep sending people out the door and telling them to, to, to sniff uh, 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 <laughs> essential oils and, and, and to pray to God and, and, to, and to put on a bikini and lay in the sun. <laughs> it, it, it's just not going to work. And that person, that doctor, would lose their job and they'd have to go write books. Yes, that's what doctors do when they lose their jobs. They have to write books. They have to make a living somehow. We are being a bit facetious there. We don't want to be unfair. What's going to happen is that trust is in tatters. And we'll add this, and it's, we're stealing it from uh, borrowing it, let's say, from uh, one of your famous homemakers there. Uh, and it's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, Harold. <laughs> we thought we did that really well. And it's a good thing. Trust needs to be in tatters because people have trusted people, institutions, and situations that are completely working against them. The medical profession, along with the academics, the colleges, the universities, ooh, down the drain. Mm -hmm. Yes. It needs to happen. Down the drain. Because... You have too many, read the statistics, some doctors say there's 250,000 um, medical de deaths that happen from medical errors, 250,000. You have tremendous amount of ego and corruption and people believing in a system that hates the body, is afraid of the body, and when it treats the body, it doesn't think of the body as anything that has any feeling or aliveness. If you've ever been sick or been with someone who's sick or had an operation, and you watch the, the medical people come parading in or the doctors come parading in, it's like, oh, it's your turn. We have time here. Oh, no, no, the, the person is inconsequential. It's all about the doctors. It's all about the chart. It's all about you better do this or you're not going to get well, but you probably won't get well anyways. Fear, fear, fear into the body. And then in academia, as we said, no talent, no problem. Just go to school. They'll, they'll move you through. And then you'll be the next brain surgeon. Mm -hmm. So medical will fail. Mm -hmm. And the COVID deaths are nowhere near coming to peak. According to many researchers, mm -hmm. uh, some of them are saying 2025, you are still on an upward climb uh, uh, towards, towards accelerated deaths. Look at Hollywood. Uh, read the Hollywood magazines there. Uh, many, many people have lost, famous people have died, or the relative, young relative of a famous person has died. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. This sudden death is, is a thing. And what will come out of it? Ayurvedic is a very old practice that honors the body, understands uh, herbal uh, balance, understands the body from um, an energetic point of view, body types, 
what body can eat, how the body, it, it, it's, it's more, to use the term holistic, but it includes the life of the person. We are seeing that some of the older arts will be uh, brought forward. Uh, there's always been this big buzz behind the scenes about med beds. Um, in other words, a, a bed, a chamber that you would go into that would rebalance the body. Now, last class, we've had a few comments on it. We mentioned about a, a man who uh, attended one of our sessions and he told our vehicle he grew up with the red telephone and that everything we were saying was true and that the state of military advancement was a thousand years beyond what, what, uh, what was being shown to you. So on that premise that medical, uh, that uh, military advancement uh, is, is uh, way out there and as the um, as the Pidgey podcast would say, they have whoop, whoop, scoops. Uh, that <laughs> UFOs are real. They really are real. It's a matter of lots of people have them. They are a design. So many, the Ruskies would have UFOs. The Germans for sure, they're the engineers. The breakaway, what they call breakaway civilization, the Tesla-ites and the and the Nazis and others who, who had the ET technology who moved to South America. They would definitely have uh, UFOs. You talk to anyone in South America, they see them all the time. The U.S., of course, the U.S. is back engineering things, but uh, they would be uh, super, super advanced. Likely, uh, U.S. and Russia would have the UFOs. So um, many things will be uh, phased out uh, and if you have this advancement in technology, the advancement in medicine is also there for the given few, for the given few. But we see that in the next uh, decade that things will be exposed, the dark will be, come, be exposed, and there will be many, many people that uh, unfortunately vigilantism will take over and many lower level, we're not talking the Klaus Schwab's, but many people who uh, would go out and about who participated in the harm of humans will find they cannot go out and about anymore. They either have to hire a double or use CGI, that's computer generated images, um, which Biden is very famous for using and many people are famous for using. And then on recess you heard about uh, a famous author there. Um, who, who may be uh, a synthetic, not even uh, a real person. Someone, an Illuminati tool exposing the Illuminati, a woman, but uh, a totally fake. So, um, yes, there will be medical alternatives in the future, which they, you are going to have a rough 15 years at least of um, not unreliable medicine, and people will, will stop trusting. Today in the hospitals locally, metal detective devices. Why? Because family members are coming in and they're threatening the people at the hospitals. Yes. And there's violence in the hospitals because incompetence, um, rules that are beyond reason, keeping people from their loved ones, yes, it's, it's, it's it could be very volatile and trust your gut and if you are being given the signal that it might be time to leave, um, you may want to do that or find ways not to be in the institution itself, a home care or something like this. But we believe you said that a while back you did home care. Yes. I still do, yes. yes. That's I still do. much more, much more uh, reliable, safer, compassionate. You don't want to be in those big institutions because uh, you don't know what angry nutcase is going to do what. Well, I do, I do have to take people to the big institutions and to doctor's offices and practices, and so I, I still am very involved in it. And uh, there are actually signs in some offices and hospitals about take your violence outside because there have been incidents. Yes, and, and we'll say to you 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it was unheard of. Even yes. Yes, perhaps 10 started, but people never did that. 
now today they're angry they're with angry. schools or they hate the teachers too the teachers but what some of the things that teachers are doing they, they don't teach reading writing arithmetic they they just teach complete sex sex third grade they want to show you how to have anal sex and then they, and they want this this is kindness this is fairness this is inclusive this is pure insanity pure insanity and the insanity will lead eventually to the word us unprecedented being said over and over again but uh, we see the insanity is building up to its own volcanic eruptions but good warning to all of you and for many of you you are wasting your money on health insurance wasting wasting your money you know our vehicle she's never had health insurance never ever ever she made it through her whole life. <laughs> she didn't waste any money on years' worth of payments and then years' worth of deductibles and doctors scaring her on this and this. She, she learned. She learned how to cure things, how to fix things. Someone recently told our vehicle a website called Earth Clinic is a good place to go get good medical advice for fixing yourself and fixing your pets. So, well, I can't get out of it fast enough, frankly, and and I I'm really it wears me out. It absolutely wears me out. Well, we'll say this to you: when when a job wears you out, yeah. then it's going to make you sick. Yeah, I know. That's the problem with it wearing you out. Mm -hmm. There's being worn out and being tired and saying, "Woof, I've climbed a lot of trees there," right, William? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> uh, but sure. when. Uh, or having a busy day and helping people, it, it, it can be great. But when the people, it's like wearing you down, where you die, you got to face this person, face this person, and they're not happy. Because part of the problem is that people stop being mobile. You get cars, you're going, not going to walk. You're going to walk, you're going to ride horses, you're going to be much healthier than you are parked in a car. It's just the way it goes, even though you couldn't do much you have the ability to do a lot with cars, but it also is detrimental because you are not using the body. The body's not meant to sit all day. It's not meant to sit in front of a screen. So you have this slow deterioration of people abdicating being in the body, liking the body, and as their problems started to arise, they wanted, they were convinced someone else could fix them an old wives' tale and folklore and apple cider vinegar or, 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 or the basic things or cooking your own food. This is one of the biggest problems on the planet, cooking your own food. Our vehicle recently read something. is a good one for you. It's the winter. Red cabbage uh, will help reduce muscle and joint pain. Yes. So people will turn more towards um, a different type of medicine. Energy medicine on one level, thought medicine on another, and there will, without all the surgeries and the medicines and the, and the x-rays and the beep, beep, boop, 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 beep, beep, beep. You're supposed to get well listening to that, <laughs> laying in a bed. Have you ever seen a picture of a hospital room? Our vehicle looks at them and she said, I would die in a room like that. I wouldn't get well. It's just constant, constant uh, 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 stimulation. Invasion, invasion. Yeah. What, what will happen is that you will have a new sense of creativity. But more than that, there are many people who follow the principle of thought creates. And there's that book we recommend over and over again, the, uh, what is it called, the Encyclopedia of Ailment? Ail yeah, the Complete Encyclopedia of Ailments and diseases, yes. Good thing we have Dorsey and Harold to think for us, yeah. The complete psychopedia of ail or dictionary of ailments and diseases. And it shows how what you are thinking and what you are feeling manifests in the body. The new healing in the future may involve more brainwave mapping um, and then finding the beliefs that people have at different uh, brainwave cycles or cycles per second and inputting new belief systems and then in training the body with a, a, a frequency but the person accepting responsibility for somehow 
being a co-creator with their body's malaise. You follow this? Totally. Very, very important, very important. All right, let's move on. We have a few more people here who want to ask. Who would like to ask a question? Thank you so much. Please, this is Dorsey. Dorsey. Leo. Leo. Now you know if I give you an article about, back here about, you heard, heard read anything about for the egg yolk to help um, yes. counteract the spike protein? We believe you brought it up last time, but other okay. people are talking about it, that egg yolk um, is, it, it counteracts the spike protein. Right. And the spike protein is what makes up the, the uh, COVID-19 or the, the SARS COVID. Uh, and this, this fake, fake killing off, well, they really did kill off a lot of chickens, millions of them. But you have billions of chickens. And so this, they're running up the egg price and the whole thing, we're having people run around looking for chickens, like chickens run around without their heads. Um, <laughs> yes, it, it's, they found out that uh, eggs, our vehicle had a therapist she worked with one time, a colonic therapist, lovely lady, Polish lady. Uh, uh, she said uh, she thought that egg was the perfect food, the way it was uh, in a shell and everything that it had for it, and it had its own carrying case and, and its own refrigeration. And anyways, she highly recommended eggs, and uh, along with uh, kefir and uh, flaxseed. As, uh, she said, you, eat, you drink kefir and you have flaxseed oil or ground flaxseed, you're going to have very, very healthy, healthy, healthy guts. So yes, uh, of course they want to take away uh, uh, what may help people. And a lot of people uh, live on eggs and, and, and really use eggs and that can be a big immune system booster. And you know they put that, that the agri supply chicken feed, is, it caused the chickens to stop laying the eggs. Yes, yeah. uh, something uh, vehicle read about that too, where they're putting things in the feed, arsenic or something, uh, to uh, mess with the chickens so that they are infertile and they don't lay as many eggs. And then think about how many um, food factories and, and chicken processing centers, and there's a big attack on your food supply, massive. What else, Darcy? Well, there's an article that says study finds IQ scores in the U.S. have dropped for the first time in nearly a century. IQ scores. Yes, and and it was a it was a study done at North, Northwestern University and, and University of Oregon, and they said which indicates that IQ levels, especially for those with less education, in the 18 to 22 year age group, has lowered. That does not surprise us in the least. And you're, it's going to keep getting lower and lower and lower the more you stare at screens. The more you stare at screens, you just push buttons and do this. You, you're not doing anything. You, you are atrophying the human species. And there are those ETs who would have you be arranged in, say, the next 50 years or something so that you look more like a, a clone, and that you just perform tasks at a, at, at a computer, and then their, 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 their enticement is that you don't have to go out in the world. You're going to put on some kind of goggles, and you live in the world, and you go everywhere, but your body might be in, in, a, in a dentist chair, and it might be hooked up to tubes uh, getting food, and you're getting fatter and fatter, but you're, you're traveling in these virtual realities. This, this is a distinct possibility for some. Will the whole world end up this way? No, it's got a dead end. It, it has, has no life force to it. And we'll say this, if you want to know if something's going to work or not, if it's got life force, if it's got creativity, if it's got humor, if it's got innovation, if it's got that spark of existence, It'll keep going. Anything that wants to trap you down, it, it may happen for a while. Look how long Stalin ran Russia. Look how many millions he killed. And they only tore his statues down not that long ago. So yes, these, these dark scenarios can prevail in certain places. Give us some more juice there, Dorsey. Well, I would tell you a story. Any of you listen may want to teach their kids how to... This lady said her son came to her, I think he's 10 or 11, I said, Mom, what time is it? He said, go look at the clock. But the digital clock, it went out on the stove, so he, he went and looked at the, it was one on the wall with the arms. And she went in there and said, her son was standing up at the clock. And she said, what's wrong? He said, 
I don't know what those arms mean. He was like looking at the big arm, and, but he didn't know what they meant. He didn't know how to read a he clock. He didn't know how to read it. She said she taught him. She, she didn't know it, but she had to teach that. She, she said, son, they didn't, teach, they, didn't, they, they didn't teach him that in school. They're not teaching anything in school. All they teach is obey, be on time, and conform to the sexual schedule. Sex, sex, sex is what's being taught in school today. And you are bad, you are uh, an oppressor, and all the rest are victims. It's right out of Karl Marx, and Karl Marx, of course, said that uh, even Karl Marx's father hated him. He said that he made a deal. <laughs> yes, it's true. He said that uh, Karl Marx was said it over and over again. I made a deal with the devil. Yeah. And now today, you have all these black groups. Uh, uh, they're all Marxist. Uh, then you have all the Woka Colas. They're all Marxist. You have Antifa. Uh, they're all Marxist. Uh, you have teachers. They're proud Marxists. And they, they say, everyone has to have the same thing. And then we'll all be happy. Really? Really, be interesting to see how that works. What else, Dorsey? Well, I, I know we're gonna. I'm a time is coming up short here, but also it's hunger looms as more and more states in food programs. Cause these food programs, SNAP, whatever called the Supplemental Nutritional yes. Assistance Program. Yes. It's going to supposed to end May 11th, and I know a lot. Of, I know that's going to affect a lot of people. I know a lot of people go to those food banks. Well, we'll tell you this, that uh, we hear it from reports on the radio that uh, wealthy areas, very wealthy areas, um, Long Island, around the city, they say that uh, the lines are miles long and people are in their very, very expensive cars. And it's not like, oh, we'll just go get free food. No, that even the wealthy are broke. And friends, you have not had any, any, any financial tumult yet. It's, it's, it's not. It's not happened yet. Yet, if there was a word to sum up what's happening right now, it would be crumbling. Crumbling. Pluto, 29 degrees Capricorn. That would be a good title, Beth. <laughs> crumbling. Pluto, 29 degrees Capricorn. And it's going to go back and forth over that 29 degrees for two years as it goes into Aquarius and back. So low IQs, um, lots of layoffs, um, bank failures, uh, they will ripple. There's, they may stop a little bit, but uh, we guarantee you by July, August, September, it's going to really hit the fan on the bank failures. And, um, and then you have uh, the uh, food programs. No SNAP, and, and the, those people who get SNAP, the supplemental income there, uh, they spend it on junk because they are allowed to spend it on junk. What if you give everybody everything? So what are they going to do? Uh, are they going to go to the farmer's market suddenly? And they're going to say, yes, oh great, I understand, red cabbage is great. Uh, give me, uh, I'm going to just buy all my food here. No, they won't, they will go, they will go park themselves in McDonald's. And eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. You have you have a class of people on the planet that have developed for quite a while, and they have all races of all ethnicities, and they don't care. And in every race and in every genetic line, you have those who do care, those who are smart enough to evolve. But you have all over a lot of oh, I don't care oh. I'm too tired, oh, oh, and they don't make the link. So it'll be fascinating times, uh, which you're going to have, the problem is, is that as people get poorer and poorer, they're probably not going to do what they did during the Depression and put their very best clothes on and go stand in line for jobs or stand in line to get a bowl of soup. You know what they're doing today, they're marauding. Uh, now it's everywhere. It's, you're hearing every day somebody's doing some nuttier and nuttier and crazy, crazy thing they think they can get away with. It means they're nuts. They're not, they can't even think to understand that what they are doing is either going to get them killed or put them in prison. And while they're not putting many people in prison, because they're not punishing, 
And the only way you learn is if there are consequences. You can't let kill us out. So it's all breaking down, crumbling, breaking down, mental incompetence, mental, mental total befuddlement, bewilderment. Darcy, anything else? Or should we go to someone else? Oh, you can go to someone else. We got another question. Anyway. Anyone have a question? I do. You are? William Capricorn. William Capricorn. All right. Uh, you're a reliable guy. Yes. What, uh, what's your question? Well, we've been talking about finances a lot and bank failures, and we had mentioned how the powers that be are trying to put the central bank digital currency. Yes. They try and do a lot that. of things that they don't always succeed at. And exactly. We want to say that, that there are some people who are saying better, easy said, not easy done. Well, and there are many people who have a cell phone, they don't know how to use it. Go ahead. Well, cash, uh, they're doing this because cash is a threat to them because it can't be tracked. Of people course. Pay one another. And there's been talk, for as long as I've been alive, about doing away with cash. But yes. I don't really believe that. The colonists created their own cash when theirs was under threat from Britain. Yes. The colonial script. And I'm just wondering if you have any advice. Um, for cash. Should people be turning to cash more? Is the American dollar, even though as, as shaky as everything looks, is it still a safe bet or is something else going to come and replace it? What, what do you see for that? Well, there's some people that say that the dollar is going to be the last to fall, that the dollar will hold strong, and there's a lot of people that want it to hold strong. <clears throat> it's important to have cash on hand, absolutely. And there's a, a whole movement out there that's against the central bank, a digital currency, um, that says pay cash for everything. Stop using your credit card in person. Yes, if you're ordering something on the phone or far away, but to carry cash, use cash, even even uh, you go write a check, our vehicle will write a check and. They'll say at Trader Joe's, this is the store Trader Joe's, not Trader Joe's. Um, they'll say, oh, we never get checks. And our vehicles say, well, how do people pay? Oh, they just put it on their phone. It's all on their phone. It's all on their phone. Or credit cards. And, and then this buzz is in the United States, or perk up the rest of the world, that in the U.S., there's the beat button. Two-thirds of people are living paycheck to paycheck, and that includes those making up to $200,000 a year. So, move back to cash, pay cash, carry cash, um, stop feeding that tracking device because everything that you, place you go and everything you do is tracked, and there will be uh, necessity again the mother of, of invention there's a lot of really good people who are keeping things to themselves people are afraid to speak out they don't want to get in trouble but they are going about their own lives doing what they want and uh, in the south you have a very very strong uh, belief in family uh, belief in religion and belief in tradition it's the coastal regions uh, that are going to create the problems. Uh, and even to our friend Liliana there in her area of Washington, you know that uh, <clears throat> Oregon, and we thought it was part of Washington too, uh, they want to join Idaho. The big movement. They are voting now. Uh, to, from Oregon to go to Idaho, Washington to go to Idaho, the, the desert part of Washington, Spokane and, and, and that area. And then uh, Oklahoma's uh, developing all kinds of things. Texas, oh, they've got a weak, weak governor. Uh, there. He's, he, he's just too afraid to do anything. They, they don't have a strong governor. And uh, they're, they're all pushing back. And this is, you're going to see a lot of pushback uh, against tyranny. People are not going to put up with the tyranny. And um, what's holding people back in the U.S. is what happened on January 6th, two years ago. And the, the unreasonable um, uh, treatment, because you, you have habeas corpus in this country, you are innocent to proven guilty, you cannot be held without bail, you cannot be held in a jail. Some of these people have been in prison for two years in solitary confinement. So is it crumbling? Yes. The government will crumble. It's too corrupt. 
the medical system will crumble. It's completely betrayed the people and it's disavowing basic biology. It's disavowing the miracle of the body given the right support to heal itself. Think about that. To heal itself. This is the brilliance of the body. If you understand when to eat red cabbage. <laughs> you must know your foods. You must, and you must stay hydrated. And you must breathe and do all the things that are necessary to keep the body very vital and very alive. All right. Um, did we cover it all? Do we have one more question? or? Hi, Peace. Yes. This is Michelle. Michelle. Cancer. Cancer. Just a quick question. The word unprecedented, you had said, was the word of 2023. Yes. So my question is, will the election of 2024 <laughs> be unprecedented? <laughs> well, <laughs> if you get there. <laughs> yes, yes. That Good. would be a big question. Good point. If you get there, if you get there. Right after that election, <clears throat> it's 2025. That, that we've said it many times, we'll say it again. You have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto all changing signs and all hitting zero degrees of a new sign. And Pluto will go back to zero degrees Aquarius in 2025 in January. And then it will not go back to Capricorn anymore after that. And the other planets will go forward. That if you are going to use the word reset, that would be the, the dates that the global elites, the Klaus Schwab's would be looking for, but it would also be the God reset of humanity. Why? Because Saturn, the great teacher, would be leaving the God sign of Pisces, and people would have been lit up with powerful teachings. And when when these planets, when, when Neptune would go to Aries, and when Saturn would go to Aries, Uranus goes to, we believe, Gemini, it, it's going to be the awakening of humanity. And again, when you get into Aries, as you are tomorrow, Aries is the sign ruled by Mars. Aries, its theme is, don't tell me what to do. That's Aries. Don't tell me what to do. Now you're just having spring, and spring has got a lot of energy. It pushes through, and it push, makes people push through. They are going to be more cautious, and they're going to use mind, and uh, we'll see. It's going to be very, very interesting times. It's, if you do have elections in 2024, they will be like nothing you can imagine, because people are going to strip everything down and everyone will be feet to the fire and it may be that people you think are going to be out there they could all be toppled they could be mm -hmm. absolutely you're, you're dealing with lies corruption deceit and, and and some idiots who think they want to be president yes, there's a few out there you'll, you'll figure out who we are talking about there's one good guy out there Vivek Ramaswamy Yes. Strange name, yes. Smart man. Ooh. Just by running, he, will, he may raise the bar. But is he smart? And he won't let anyone wiggle out into any wormhole. So it's going to be very, very fascinating. And uh, we pray it does not get violent. Nonetheless, friends, breathe. Breathe deep. Breathe with the, with the intention of making yourself well. Imagine, picture it, create the best, have fun. Spring is here, and it's a whole new game. Enjoy it, and we thank you uh, for improving your lives, for inspiring one another, for attending our classes, and just uh, saying hello to the world at large. It is uh, our honor and our duty. And uh, we told you that the, uh, the pigeons mission, of course, is to spy on world leaders, but they now call it Mission Possible. Yes. <laughs> That's the, they, like to, they like to take a little bit from everybody <laughs> yeah, and, then, and then pretend that they, it's all original with them, but uh, they are the pigeons, what can we say? And, uh, well, as they say, 
We, you can count on us to save the day. You can count on us to save the day. We are the PPP. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Thank you, and uh, great the best. Thank you.